Welcome to our deep dive, everyone. Today, we're going backstage uh, to explore the anatomy of the violin. It's one of the most incredible instruments out there. It really is. And by the end of this, you'll know the parts of a violin and how they all work together to create its sound. Think of it like taking the instrument apart and seeing the magic inside each piece. Exactly. So to start with the big picture, uh, what are the main sections we should be thinking about? Hmm, let's see. Of the violin, I mean. Oh, right, yeah. So we can break the violin down into the body, the neck, right. the peg box, which houses the tuning pegs, the Oops. bridge, okay. and of course the strings. So the body, it's more than just a pretty wooden shell. Right, right. absolutely. The body of the violin is like a natural amplifier. It's amazing how such a small instrument can be so powerful. Yeah, it really is. And it's all thanks to the way the body is constructed okay. and the types of wood used. So the type of wood actually affects the sound? Absolutely. What kind of woods are we talking about? So the back is typically made of maple, which is strong and dense to handle the pressure from the strings. Mm -hmm. It's also arched, which helps it resist that pressure oh, I see. and contributes to the resonance. And the top of the violin is made of spruce? The top or the belly, as it's sometimes called. Okay. Yeah, it's made of spruce. What's special about spruce? It's incredibly light, resonant, and flexible. Oh, okay. So it vibrates easily and projects the sound well. So you've got the strong maple back, the flexible spruce top. What connects them? The ribs. Oh, okay. They connect the top and back, and they're usually made from maple or willow. Interesting. The ribs actually help to mellow the tone a bit oh, so. by absorbing some of the vibrations. Oh, that's cool. What about the purfling and the rosette? Oh yeah, those decorative touches. Are those purely aesthetic? Not at all. The purfling strengthens the edges and prevents cracks. I see. And the rosette adds structural support mm -hmm. and even subtly influences the vibrations. So they're not just for looks? Nope, form and function. And what about the F holes? Those always fascinated me. The F holes? Yeah. Do they do more than just look cool? Oh, they're definitely more than just looks. Oh. They project the vibrations outward from the body. Like little vents for the sound. You could think of it that way. Okay. But their shape and placement also enhance specific frequencies. Oh, wow. Which creates a balanced tone. So they're fine tuning the sound. Yeah, in a way. That's amazing. So the body amplifies the sound. But how do you control the notes? Well, that's where the neck and fingerboard come in. Oh, yeah. The neck provides a foundation for the fingerboard. And the fingerboard is usually made of ebony. It is. I'm okay. It's super durable and has a smooth surface. Oh, OK. Which makes it easy for the player to move their fingers. So that's how they change the notes. Exactly. What about that little piece at the end of the fingerboard? The nut. Yeah, the nut. Yeah, that little guy is important. It seems so tiny. It is small. What does it do? But it ensures the strings are spaced correctly and raised slightly above the fingerboard. What does that do? So they can vibrate freely. I see, so the body amplifies, the neck and fingerboard control the notes. Right. But how do those vibrations get from the strings to the body to be amplified? That is where the bridge comes in. The bridge. Yeah, it acts as the link between the strings and the body. Hmm. I'm curious, it seems small for such a big job. It is small, but it's strategically placed. Okay. It has two feet that stand on either side of the F holes. Oh, right. Right over that area that vibrates the most. I see. So it maximizes the energy transfer. So it channels the vibrations to the right spot. Exactly. What about the strings themselves? Oh, the strings are where it all starts. Okay. The violin has four strings, G, D, A, and E. Okay. They're tuned in perfect fifths, ah. which gives the violin its unique range. What are the strings made of? They used to be made of gut, really, but nowadays they're typically steel or synthetic materials. Gut strings. Yeah. I bet that sounded different. They did. Each type has its own qualities. So we've got the body, neck, fingerboard, bridge, strings. Is there anything else that affects the sound? Hmm. Well, there are things like pegs and a tailpiece. Yeah, but I thought those were just for tuning. They are for tuning and anchoring the strings, okay. but they also impact the overall sound. Really? Yeah, things like the material of the tailpiece, okay. the type of pegs, even the chin rest can all affect the sound. So they're not just functional? Not just functional, no. I'm ready to hear more about those. Let's do it. Let's start with the tuning pegs. Those little wooden knobs on the scroll. Oh, those are the ones they tighten and loosen the strings for tuning. I've always been intimidated by them. Oh, yeah? They seem so delicate. Is it easy to break a string? It takes practice to get the right touch. So it's all about the right pressure. Right. You don't want to go too far. 
Are there different types of tuning pegs? Yeah, actually, no. most common are friction pegs. Okay. They rely on friction between the wood to hold the string, no. but there are also geared pegs. Oh, those have internal gears. Yeah, they have gears for finer adjustments. Also, they're more precise. They are, yeah, more for advanced players. And Whitner pegs. Those are a more modern geared design. So like choosing the right tool for the job. Exactly. Depends on your skill level. Makes sense. So the strings are tuned with pegs at the top mm -hmm. and then anchored at the bottom by the tailpiece. That's right. The tailpiece is usually metal or wood. I've seen them in all sorts of shapes. Yeah, they come in different materials too. Does that affect the sound? It can. Really? Yeah, the material and design affect the weight distribution. Okay. And how the strings vibrate. Interesting. So even the tailpiece changes the tone. Subtle changes? Yeah. Wow. Some have fine tuners built in too. Right. Those tiny screws for even more precise adjustments. So many little details. What about the chin wrist? The chin wrist? It's for comfort, right? It's crucial for the player's comfort and posture. But does it affect the sound? Not the sound waves directly. But if you're not comfortable, you can't play your best. Right. That makes sense. It affects how you hold the violin. So it's about finding the right fit. Yeah, there are different shapes and heights available. Each player finds what works for them. Exactly. Comfort and security are key. So they can focus on the music. Exactly. What about the end pin? Oh, that little stick at the bottom. Yeah. That one. What's its role? It's a point of contact between the violin and the player. Okay. Helps to stabilize the instrument. Ah, like another point of contact. Yeah, and players can adjust the height. Oh, so it's adjustable? For their physique and style. That makes sense. So all these small details work together. They do. Like the pegs, the tailpiece, yeah. the chin wrist and end pin. It creates a custom fit for the player. So they can produce the best sound. Right. It's all about that connection. Fascinating. What about the varnish? The varnish? Yeah, I thought that was just for looks. It does enhance the look. And protect the wood. It does protect the wood. But it affects the sound too. The varnish actually plays a critical role in sound quality. How can something so thin do that? It's all about its composition. Okay. Traditional violin varnishes are made from natural resins, oils, and solvents. Okay. It's applied in many thin layers. Oh, wow. To create a flexible protective coating. And that affects the sound. It enhances the vibration of the wood. So it vibrates with the wood. You could say that. Amazing. The varnish changes how the wood vibrates. The density and texture affect the projection of sound waves. Oh, wow. And here's something else. Okay. Varnish ages and matures over time. Really? What do you mean matures? It's shaped by the vibrations. It evolves with the instrument. You could say that. Wow, that's incredible. That's why those old Italian violins yeah. have such incredible depth. Because the varnish has aged. Centuries of maturing. It's like a living part of the violin. That's incredible. We've covered so much. The body, the neck, all these tiny details. It's amazing, right? It is. It seems everything plays a role in the sound. Every little bit. But we haven't talked about the bow. Ah, the bow. Yeah. How do we make the string sing? The bow is the violin's dance partner. It brings it to life. It does. Without it, the violin's just a beautiful object. That's true. It's amazing how something so simple can create so much emotion. It is. What are the key elements of a good bow, you think? Hmm. The stick is traditionally Pernambuco wood. Okay. It's strong, but flexible. Oh, so you can handle the pressure. Exactly. And then there's the frog. That ebony piece at the bottom. Yeah, that what one. What does it do? Holds the hair in place. Okay. And lets you adjust the tension. And the hair itself. Usually white horse hair, carefully mm -hmm. selected. So the horse hair creates the sound. It does. And you apply rosin to the bow hair. That's right. <laughs> What's the purpose of that? Rosin is essential for the friction right. between the bow hair and the strings. So without rosin? The bow would just slide, no sound. Okay, wow. Like grip tape on a tennis racket. Uh, I get it. What is rosin exactly? It's a solid resin. Okay. Derived from trees, usually pine trees. Mm -hmm. Comes in a cake and you rub it on the hair. To make it sticky. To make it sticky. So it grips the strings. So that's how the strings vibrate. Exactly. Is all rosin the same? Another great question. It's not all the same. Okay. There are different types for different instruments and climates. Oh, wow. Even for different playing styles. Really? Some are harder for a brighter sound. Oh, okay. Others softer for a warmer tone. So many choices. It depends what sound you're looking for. Wow, every aspect of the violin has these little nuances. They all come together in the final sound. It makes it so unique. That's what makes the violin so expressive. It's a delicate balance of craftsmanship. And the player's own touch. We've gone from the big picture to the smallest details. It's clear that 
Every element plays a role. It really does. But caring for a violin goes beyond just wiping it down. It does. Understanding the anatomy helps with maintenance? Absolutely. So how do we take care of our violins? Well, one of the most important things is to protect it from extreme temperatures. Oh, yeah. And humidity. So no hot cars or damp basements. Exactly. Wood expands and contracts with changes in temperature and moisture. Right. It's a natural material. Yeah. And those changes can lead to cracks or warping. Oh, that makes sense. Even damage to the glue joints. What about the bow? Does that need special care, too? The bow definitely needs special care. Okay. You need to loosen the bow hair after each playing session. Why is that? Leaving it tight can damage the bow okay. and shorten its lifespan. And I'm guessing regular cleaning is important, too. Regular cleaning is key. Wipe down the strings and the body after each use. What should you use to clean it? Just a soft, dry cloth. Okay. Avoid harsh chemicals or abrasive cleaners. Why is that? They can damage the varnish. That delicate varnish. Yeah. It seems like caring for a violin is as intricate as the instrument itself. It's all connected. Knowing the anatomy helps you understand the care. Is there anything else we should be doing? You should have it checked by a luthier at least once a year. A luthier. A violin maker or repairer. Oh. They can inspect it for wear and tear. Right. Make adjustments to the bridge or sound post. Oh, right. And just make sure everything's in good working order. So like a checkup for your violin. Exactly. Preventative maintenance is key. This has been an amazing deep dive. It has been fun. We've seen how every part contributes to the magic of the violin. From the scroll to the end pin. It's true. And next time I hear a violin, I'll be listening with new ears. I hope you've gained a deeper appreciation for this incredible instrument. I definitely have. Maybe I'll even visit a luthier's workshop now. You should. Seeing those skilled artisans at work is fascinating. I think I will. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this journey into the heart of the violin. It's been my pleasure. Until next time, keep listening and keep learning.